Hey, what's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. What a roller coaster day. The market went from red to green to red to green. It was like, like being on a roller coaster. Hey, for those of you that are new to the page, go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. Make sure you don't fall for any spam in the comment section. And anything I say today or any day is not a suggestion for you to buy, hold, or sell. Uh, but this is going to be an interesting week, and uh, let's get into it. Let's start by reminding you guys what is to come uh, this week. Uh, the FOMC meeting, which is the Fed meeting, will happen this Tuesday and Thursday uh, at the time of watching this video. That is May 3rd and 4th. And we most are expecting the Fed to... Uh, raise the interest rates by a half a percent or 50 basis points. Uh, a lot of the volatility in the market is because of that. The market starts to price in. The market always is forward looking. So the market is already pricing in a half uh, uh, a percent or 50 basis points. Now, here's what could happen. If the Fed say, hey, we're only going 25% because we see inflation peaking and flattening the market, you'll have a green day, you'll probably have a green week, the market will just run up. If the Fed say we're going up, we have to get even more hawkish, hawkish, you know, the opposite of a dove is, is a hawk, get it? So that's why they say dovish and hawkish. So if they go more aggressive, which is hawkish, meaning they, they say we're going up by 75 basis points. The market will get another beat down. That's what we don't want. So most are expecting the Fed to go by 50. And we won't know until they say what most think. All right. But hey, nothing is facts until it happens. So we're just going to wait for the third and the fourth. OK, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. All right, May 3rd and 4th. That's very important for all of you guys to know. All right, so the Fed has a difficult job because they have to combat the worst inflation in over 40 years, right? It's not an easy thing to do. So now the Fed, as you know, last, uh, last meeting, they went up a quarter. Now they're talking about 50. And even if they go up by 50 tomorrow, that, it, that doesn't, is not the end all, should I say, because they could give you forward projections or future projections that might be hawkish and the market won't like that. And it could cause the market to further tank. And if you are like me, we don't need no more red. I, I am tired of looking at the red. We just don't need it. But here's what's happening in reality. The high multiple stocks are at fair valuation now, right? And so the more expensive stock are getting beat down. They're being called on the carpet and they're getting repriced. It is a purging of overhyped, over expensive stock. And that's what happens in every bear market. This has been the worst start of the year. And, and most of you guys, I can guarantee you 95% of the people that are investing, that are watching this video, haven't seen a start this bad and it's just year to date that's where we've been all right so i talked about yesterday what's going to happen for the housing market so you may say yeah one of the uh uh, uh leading indicators what i think is a lagging indicator of an upcoming recession is housing but it's still on fire right so here's what will happen with housing now that they're going up 50 basis points, and remember, we still have five more, right? Five more interest rate hikes this year, right? And, uh, or six more, you know, one per month, do the math. We know that the, it, the Fed is going higher and higher and higher. What is that doing to interest rates? When you go to mortgage a house, it's making the interest rate higher. It's making the house more expensive, right? And from contract to close, by the time a new couple com comes and sign a contract, right, and they get ready to, to get financed, you know, on day one, they can afford it. And by the time the process is over, the Fed has went up again one or two times. Now they can't afford the house. 
And what will happen to the housing market, it's going to slow down, come to a screeching halt, and then start to fall because now people are not even qualifying for a house they would have otherwise qualified for. Last year, you, you could have got a mortgage for 2.5, 2.4, some of these people. Now it's over five, just in this shorter period of time. And so that's what could quickly bring the housing market back down because it's too, it's overinflated. The prices of these houses are ridiculous, okay? And so the Fed has to make it difficult, more difficult for you to buy the house that curtails inflation, runaway inflation. What is happening in the housing market? You have a lot of people with money, meaning high demand, but there's less product on the shelves, okay? Less supply. So there's less houses because the builders, because of the supply chain problems, couldn't build enough houses. So there wasn't enough new houses. That's why houses are priced the way they are because there's a limited supply and more buyers with more money. And that is a recipe for disaster. So that's how the housing market could fall in line with all of the uh, indicators to set us up, right? So now, here's another thing. Having said all of that, a lot of analysts are expecting that we are close to the bottom of this market this cycle, meaning before the recession. When do they expect the recession? Q2 of next year, 2023. So they expect the recession to happen next year. So what could happen is we could be near the bottom in this cycle and we could have a run up, right? We will know this, I believe, Larry believes that we will know this in the next six weeks. What's gonna happen in the next six weeks? Starting from today, the Fed meeting on the 3rd and 4th, and then June's meeting on the 14th and the 15th. I believe that those two will be the, the two most aggressive Fed rate hikes, and we will have a clearer view of what's to happen from now until the end of the year. I also believe that inflation will peak, and if not March, April, right? I believe the peak will happen more in April than March. So it might be flat in March and it might not have peaked in March. We'll find out. Some people think so. I don't know. I'm not an analyst. But I do believe that by April, we'll see peaking inflation, which will be a green light for the market to start running more positive, right? But here's what's going to happen. And I'm going to end by saying this. Don't get fooled by the okie doke, right? If the market literally can hit an all-time new high, with a looming recession coming next year. And so what will happen is we're riding high. Everybody's making a lot of money. Hey, nothing's going to happen. Look at how much money we're making. Hey, we're back to 2020, 2021. Uh, and everything is a bull run. And let's just dump, 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 dump. You better, I'm suggesting that you better have a exit plan or a long-term plan. Now, if you long-term investing, you do you, but I'm telling you that companies like Tesla, I expect to buy at in the $500 range during the recession or lower. I'm expecting. So if I buy any Tesla now at 850, then that's only going to be a swing trade for me because that is not where I'm expecting to load up long term. So when in doubt, zoom out, look at a short term window and it, you know, and plan your executions based on that, but also look at your long-term window and plan your executions based on that. That's why we here at StockUp, we do what? We swing trade and we long-term invest because the long-term investing is going to get us help to create generational wealth. All right, that's all I wanted to say. It was a mouthful. I don't even want to go to the charts because it's just a waste of time. You guys saw today, if you watch the market, red, green, red, green, red, green. It was like a roller coaster, right? I'm dizzy. <laughs> All right, hey, leave me a comment. I'm interested to know what your short-term and your long-term plan is for the stock market. Let's be smart and look at the data that's in front of us, okay? But hey, you guys already know.
you guys already know, we swing trading crypto and stock with our Weeble, right? Download the link below. Deposit $1 right now. They got a promotion going on. You guys already know, up to $9,600. But for those of us that are cashing up and getting ready for the looming recession, right? Whenever it comes, we are simply dollar cost averaging. We are treating this like a savings account. Open up that Moomoo link below, deposit $100 just to get started, and they're going to give you uh, up to six free stock worth up to $3,500 per stock. But we're just, we're just saving money there. Nothing lost. There's no risk. And then we may do some short term in there just to ramp it up. But then at some point, we're going to cash out and we're going to get ready. We're going to cash up for the looming recession. The biggest problem when there's a looming recession is people are caught in so many trades. And when the recession happens, you don't know. There's no bah, 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 upcoming recession. That doesn't happen, right? It just happens. As a matter of fact, most recessions, by the time we know we're in a recession, we're already six months into the recession. But most people get caught, what, cashless. We're not, right? We are not scared. We are prepared. I'm going to leave it right there, good people. This is good stuff. I want you to think about it and leave me a comment. What is your short-term plan and what is your long-term plan for the stock market? You guys already know I love you guys. Live, love, laugh, and learn.